tasks with the idea of talking about, in the modern day, surgical management of adult glioblastoma, particularly focused on two learning objectives to begin with. In this, we want to describe the relative benefits of extended resection across, across glioma subtype, describe the pros and cons of fluorescence-guided resection of glioblastoma, and really unpack how we as surgeons, as neurosurgeons, make decisions about who gets surgery and when and what tools we can use in the intraoperative setting to help us do our jobs better. So in that, each of us, each and every day, are faced with counseling patients about surgery. And these are just characteristic images of patients that we see when they present to us in the emergency room or in clinic. And for each of these situations, we think about immediately about how we are going to counsel the patient. And we think about factors such as tumor volume, location, functional status, pre-morbid medical conditions, their social support. We make inferences about molecular subclassification and what that might mean. And so if we use a case example, in this 70-year-old right-handed woman comes with this scan, a left-sided contrast-enhancing scan, what are our goals of surgery? And we know that much of the decision about surgical goals has really changed or has really been based on data before 2016 when WHO changed the classification of gliomas. And in that, high-grade gliomas, glioblastoma specifically, has, separ has been separated into two distinct clinical entities, those with IDH mutation and those with IDH wild-type subtypes of glioblastoma. However, our decisions about surgical extensive resection for these patients have lagged a little bit, and over the last several years, there have been increasing numbers of publications trying to help us understand how to best address these concerns with our patients, meaning should our goals of surgery matter and take into factor both clinical and patient parameters. So for example, this was a nice paper published out of MD Anderson. Um, in Journal of Clinical Oncology in 2014, which basically showed that the extent of resection goal of 98% achieved and modeled out in two separate patients, one with 40 years, uh, one 40 years of age with a Karnowski performance score of 100 versus a 84-year-old with the same 98% extent of resection, the survival benefit varied quite a bit between the two. And these interactive effects between extended resection, extended resection goals, and clinical parameters and molecular parameters has been only recently studied. And I want to highlight some work that's helped us try to understand these factors a little bit better. So this is a recent paper out of JAMA Oncology, which really worked on trying to understand these interactive effects of volumetric extended resection, taking into account both molecular and oncological factors to try to help us develop a roadmap with respect to what we hope to accomplish for cytoreductive surgery. In this study, this included uh, 20 years of data, including over 800 patients at a single institution. And in addition to simply focusing on contrast-enhancing tumor, this study included also non-enhancing tumor volumes in addition to enhancing tumor volumes, and separated patients into pre- and post-stoop era, pre- or post-timazolamide era. A bit more about demographics here. Um, most importantly, we'll see that most of these patients were IDH wild type as opposed to IDH mutant tumor subtypes. And the median and mean contrast-enhancing tumor extended resection was 90 and 97% for contrast enhancement and non-enhancing were 52 and 53 percent. Important is just think about exclusion criteria. This data that we'll talk about really does not apply to individuals with biopsy only. These are patients or in situations in which extended maximum extended resection was the surgical goal. So again, we won't talk about the entire paper in the interest of time, but if we think about a couple of separate sub, uh, subsets of patients, we'll focus on the entire cohort We'll focus on the stoop era, 
and we'll focus on, again, patients with IDH, with, with IDH wild-type tumors only. And so if you take the entire cohort and you run a log hazard ratio of mortality using a cost proportional hazard model, you can see that your volumetric extended resection has um, uh, implications on your log hazard uh, ratio of glioma, glioblastoma mortality, but that, that uh, level um, impact really levels off between roughly 30 and 85% extended resection. It's really at about 80 to 85% where the curve starts to drop um, and you get the most benefit with the extended resection, but there's a slight benefit with the lower extended resection volumes. And then we can use a recursive partitioning model. Um, there are a number of recursive partitioning statistical methods. Uh, this study chose a multivariate analysis uh, uh, focusing on decision trees. Um, and in these decision trees, these trees, this model is designed to correctly classify members of a population by splitting them into subpopulations based on several dichotomous independent variables. And so we can discuss these in, in more detail, but let's see how these trees separate. So this is a busy slide, and we'll break each of these individual subsets um, down one by one, combining these RPA uh, data, this RPA data with our, our Kaplan-Meier survival curves. So this initial analysis is focused purely on patients in the STOOP era with IDH status known. And you can initially see our poorest performers are patients, are adult patients, where in which timazolamide was not received, and they're older in age. Those patients did the worst. Patients that did the best were those where timazolamide was given, and they were either IDH mutated, or they were IDH wild type, younger age, with less non-enhancing tumor volume. And then we can fill in the middle, where we have our no timazolamide group that were under the age of 65 at the age of diagnosis, or our yes treated with timazolamide, IDH wild type, over the age of 65 with more contrast enhancing tumor and non enhancing tumor volume at the end of the resection. And then our other middle group, which we labeled S green, that you can see here. But if we go, go a little further into this and we try to split out this best performing group on our Kaplan-Meier curve, we can split, we can see that there's two separate populations for this group labeled four here. Again, these are individuals with timazolamide treated, MG, uh, IDH status mutated, and IDH wild type, younger age, less in, or, uh, greater extended resection of non-enhancing volume. And if you look at Figure B here, you can see that with greater extended resection of the non-enhancing tumor volume, an IDH mutant patient will perform like an IDH wild type patient for roughly a little over two years, two and a half years, which led to uh, led us to think about the idea that greater extended resection for a younger patient under the age of 65 could suggest that you could help an IDH mutant patient, an IDH wild type patient with a favor, non-favorable genetic profile behave more like an IDH mutant patient, which was a, 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 a big deal in the way we think about uh, maximum safe resection. So if we then follow up briefly with our IDH wild type group along, we can see similar curves. Again, poor form performers are no timazolamide with non-enhancing um, uh, non-enhancing pre-op uh, tumor volume that's greater and our best performers are younger age with greater extended resection of both enhancing and non-enhancing disease as you can see in these RPA trees and as borne out in our Kaplan-Meier survival curves. So that led us to believe that in the STOOP era our timazolamide treated patients that are IDH wild type and over the age of 65 benefit from cytoreduction reduction of the enhancing tumor. While our IDH wild type timazolamide treated patients under the age of 65 benefit from reduction of both enhancing and non-enhancing tumor, 
with median survival similar to that of IDH mutant timozolomide treated patients, and patients faring worse are those who did not receive timozolomide and are over the age of 65. So again, a simple, if you think about this in a more simple manner, if, your patient, if our patients are younger than 65, then our goal of extended resection is really the enhancing tumor. If our patients are younger than 65, then our goals of extended resection really, if feasible, can be our enhancing and non-enhancing tumor. 